Entitlement reaches all walks of life, as you'll find out in this episode of Entitled People. Our first one is from username Berthier titled, Let's Make Your Bridal Shower Into Our Bridal Shower. My cousin will be getting married just six days after my wedding, so all our wedding events are pretty much right after the other. So my sister is throwing me a bridal shower and my friends have been informed for months to save the date, but my relatives have only just been invited two weeks before the actual shower and it's all because of her. We knew if she knew about it, she'd want to do something super entitled. And she tried. She invited everyone through the All Cousins group chat, and as soon as this particular cousin saw the messages, she immediately called me. Which I don't understand why, since my sister is the one sending the invite messages in the first place. It starts asking, what's going on? What's happening? As soon as I say my sister is throwing me a bridal show, the first thing she says, literally word for word, Ooh, I want a bridal shower. Anna, let's have a bridal shower together. Instead of doing it at your house, let's do it somewhere else though. Like, my sister and I have been planning this for months. We've been running around every day shopping, spending quite a bit. And then here she comes, wanting to take over my shower and make it about her, because her own sister was too busy planning her wedding for her, paying for all the vendors and makeup and hair for her, because she herself has no money to pay for her own wedding. I informed her that this is something my sister can do for me. If she wants a shower of her own, it's something her sister or her best friend can do for her. And even if I were crazy enough to agree, I know she wouldn't pay for any of it. She'd make her own demands of what she wants and how she wants it, and where my friends would be coming to celebrate it with me. It'll suddenly be about her. I hadn't even agreed to any of it, and she already tried kidnapping my bridal shower to have it somewhere else. I hadn't even said one word to reply before she already says we should do it somewhere else. And if we were to hire someplace out, I know she wouldn't pay for any of it. Her parents and brother are paying for her wedding. Her sister is planning and paying for the vendors, her makeup artists, to get her hair done for the day. All she's paying for is the small, tiny things. To conclude, in my best friend's words, instead of being grateful and happy to be invited, she tries to make it hers. Unfortunately, the world we live in has many people like this that they feel the world revolves around them and every single special occasion they need to make it about them, even if it had nothing to do with them. In this case, it kinda did, but it kinda didn't. It was your bridal party, so I'm glad you stood your ground and didn't let her ruin it. This next one is by Agitated Criticism 673 titled Entitled Ex-Wife Tries to Get Me Fired Over a Bank Account She Wasn't Supposed to Access. So I worked at a small community bank for a time as a banker, opening and closing accounts, completing paperwork, etc. This occurred shortly after we opened our doors again after COVID. An older gentleman, who we'll call Jim, came in on a random Monday and asked to speak with a banker. I was available and invited him into my office. Once inside, he related that he and his wife, we'll call Karen, were going through a divorce. Jim expressed that Karen had full control over the finances to the point where he didn't even have a checkbook or debit card for the accounts, even though one of the accounts was solely funded by his pension checks. He then informed me that he had come in to check if Karen had been writing checks off of the account, as he had a copy of a legal document she had signed stating she would only be writing checks off of the account for necessities up until a certain date, which happened to be three weeks prior to Jim coming in. After ascertaining that he was whom he said he was, i.e. checking his ID, I pulled up the account in question. Since Karen only had checks for the account, we could track and view a photocopy of each check written that had been cashed. We discovered that she had continued to spend not only past the day she was supposed to stop, but she was also writing checks for non-essentials, also a no-no. 
Jim then tells me that he was suspicious that this would happen because when they began the divorce process, she had taken half the money out of the account and was forced to put it back. I could see the transactions in the account history, so he wasn't lying. He then asks me what he can do to ensure she cannot touch his money. I told him that since she has the checkbook for the account, taking her off of the account wouldn't guarantee that she couldn't touch it. The only option would be for him to close this account and open a new account with only him on it. He decided that he wanted that, so we did just that. After he leaves, I continue on my day, updating my supervisor on the situation due to how strange everything was. Well, a few hours later, Karen, whom I've never met before, storms in and demands to speak with the supervisor. My boss takes her into her office, and what I was told later was that Karen was demanding I be fired because I was talking badly about her, lie, and that I closed her checking account without calling her to get consent. My manager explained to her that our policy with joint accounts is that either party on the account can close the account without the other party's consent. She also assured Karen that I would never talk badly about anyone, especially someone I have never met. Mind you, my boss's office is next to mine, with extremely thin walls, so she would have been able to hear if I was talking badly about her. She ended up storming out angrily after giving me the stink eye. Edit. Forgot to mention, Jim had called me right before Karen showed up and left me a voicemail warning that she was coming. I wasn't in my office at the time and didn't get the voicemail until after she had left. I think in the end this crazy Karen is just mad that she's not allowed to spend money that isn't rightfully hers anymore and the fact that she already broke the agreement, I really hope that Jim was able to take legal action against Karen and at least recover some of the funds that she spent when she shouldn't have. And our final one is from Hardcore Gore titled Woman Parks in My Spot, then informs me I'm in her spot when I decide to park next to her. So, the complex I live in has assigned parking in both shaded and non-shaded spots. My spot is between two other assigned spots and is shaded. The spot to my left is also shaded. The spot to my right is not. The car that parks in the unshaded spot is a bigger SUV type of car, and it's white. I never really paid attention to the exact make or model though. Yesterday, I get home and there is a white SUV type car in my spot. The unshaded spot next to me is open. I figure it must just be the neighbors and decide I'll just pull into the unshaded spot next to my usual spot. I was only going to be home for a short amount of time before leaving to pick up my boyfriend, so I figured I'll just park in their spot for the time being, and if they're still there when I come back, then I'll ask them to move. Once I pull in, I realize there are people in the car, just sitting there and also wonder if it is in fact the same car that's usually next to me, but I wasn't too sure. I still really didn't want to bother these people, and I just wanted to get inside, so I gathered my things, and as I'm getting out of my car, a woman from the driver's side comes around and asks if I'm Carla. I don't know who that is, so I just say no awkwardly and she sort of laughed and was like, Seriously? I guess she thought I was being sarcastic or something when I said I wasn't Carla? Then she went on to say, Well, that's my spot. I'm just waiting for my realtor. So I simply pointed in the direction of her car and said, And that's mine. Then she said, Ooh, <laughs> let's switch then. It was just so hot not being in the shade. So I get back in my car and switch. I went up to my place afterwards and was thinking about it a little more and it was just kind of weird. Like... I at least recognized the color and the size of the vehicle next to me, but my car wasn't familiar to her at all. Also, how are you going to park in a spot that isn't yours, then immediately tell someone they're in your spot without knowing who they are? When I left to get my boyfriend, the car was gone, but it was there again when we got back home. They were in the unshaded spot, not my spot. I told him about it when we got inside and he was pretty annoyed and convinced she doesn't actually have a spot yet as apparently her car isn't the same as the car that's been parking there. Which makes sense in some ways, but also leads me to more questions. Like why say the unshaded spot is yours when you don't even have a spot yet? The whole situation was rather strange. The simple answer to all of that is just entitlement. 
she felt entitled to having a spot that didn't belong to her, and then she also wanted to create a little bit of drama that backfired. However, when the drama did backfire, I do commend her for switching spots and giving you your spot back. A lot of entitled people would just be defensive and would not even do such a thing. Alright, that's enough entitlement for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of Entitled People. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.